we are live on the Frugal Crafters YouTube channel. I'm Lindsay, the Frugal Crafter, along with Sarah. Hi! And today we're talking about ink because do you know what next month is? Ink month? Ink Tober! <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't get that. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> yes, Ink Tober. It's um every year for the uh, every October for the, for the past couple of years, Jake Parker has um, started this Inktober thing, just encouraging people to um, use ink, ink things up, draw, do something, you can do something every day, you can do something once a week, you could work on one drawing all month long, but it's just kind of a challenge and encouragement to get people to draw. And I have a giveaway. I'm gonna be giving three lucky viewers um, a, co a copy of Fabulous Figures and Whimsical Girls from Jane Davenport, her new books. They are fantastic, especially Fabulous Figures. It's a beautiful drawing book. Um, and when's Whimsical Girls is kind of like a, a coloring book, uh, an art journal all rolled into one. There's interesting different papers. There's craft papers and watercolor papers and cardstock papers. So it's like you've kind of been handed a art journal that Jen, uh, Jane Davenport's already started and you get to play in. So um, over on my blog, there's a link in the video description. Leave a comment on my blog and um, and you will be entered. I will pick three winners next Friday so and I will notify you via email. That's why I need you to sign up on my blog because I can see your email addresses when you sign up there. And uh, if your comment doesn't show right up, don't worry, I have to approve any new commenters. So uh, just rest assured, if you left a comment, you are in the drawing. So uh, And all the details on that contest are on my blog. Whew, it's uh, been a Friday morning. <laughs> And you're doing well today, Sarah? I am, yes. Wonderful. Uh, if you guys have questions as we go along, we're going to be talking about many different types of inks, um, like the five most common drawing inks, drawing types of inks. Um, I have a rundown of these types of inks on my blog, so if you get confused or lost or just want a little clarifying information, um, I actually spent most of the morning writing that blog post, and that's why I got a little, uh, little behind schedule. So that's all um, wrapped up there. And I'll be taking your questions as we go along. So type the word QUESTION in all caps if in the live chat here on YouTube if you have a question. And the moderators might help you. If uh, the moderators can't help you, Sarah will relay the question to me. I will try to be very thorough though, so hopefully uh, I will touch base on, um, on most of the things. So is there anything I forgot to add? I think we got it. All right, wonderful. So we're just going to begin with... Um, with let's start with like the most probably basic type of ink which would be your water soluble um drawing ink so there are so many different brands of this i obviously don't have them all but um you don't i don't believe it or not there are so many so many so is that your next collection that you're going to be starting no i've got plenty because <laughs> you don't need to have all the different brands because there's there's a lot of redundancy like if you were to get all the different brands you would just have uh you'd have so much of the same um, so when you're looking at water soluble ink, um, these are, when I'm saying water soluble, I mean inks that you would use and then they would be able to be picked back up again. So like if I dropped this on a piece of glass, I could spray it with water and wipe it off all the way. Whereas if I dropped, uh, even if it was dry, whereas if I dropped India ink or acrylic ink or alcohol ink on glass and I let it dry, it would be difficult to wipe away. So these would be like, uh, the Jane Davenport, um, the, the new scented inks, the incredible inks. They would be like the Windsor and Newton drawing inks. And uh, I also want to mention that Jerry's Artorama is sponsoring this video. I have, do have links to these types of inks in the video description if you want to have a look at the different kinds that are there. If I mention something and you want to research it, they have a really good selection, so you'll be able to kind of compare there if, uh, if need be. Uh, Windsor and Newton drawing inks would probably be my recommendation out of, um, out of these water-soluble inks just because they're... Um, they've been around a long time. They're very tried and true. I haven't heard people complaining about fading, but when you're looking at these types of inks, you want to kind of expect that they're going to be fading inks because they are, um, for the most part, dye-based inks. That's why they're so transparent. So instead of having thick, viscous pigment particles, they use, um, they use thinner dye-based particles. So you would want to use inks like this in your art journals and your markers your watercolor markers would be using the same exact ink so whether you're using 
brush pens like the Arteza brush pens, Zig brush pens, or using Tombows or Marbies or what have you, this is all the same kind of ink. So these would be compatible with one another. These would act a lot like your watercolors. Um, they would act like your stamp pad ink, your dye based stamp pad ink. It's all pretty much the same animal. Do we have any questions on these inks we're, right now? We're caught up for the moment. I have a feeling we'll be getting questions oh, though. Oh, probably. So, so yeah, just let me know if somebody has a, has an inky question. So we will keep the questions to ink here. So a lot of times I will use inks in conjunction with other media. So I'm just going to grab my sketchbook here and grab a few inky examples. Like this one right here. This uh, pizza here was started with um, water-based ink. It was the water-based brush pens, the Arteza brush pens. Those are really easy to use. It's probably one of the most convenient ways to use the ink, but you can also use them with like your dip pens um, or in a fountain pen because it doesn't have those heavy pigment particles. Yeah. Uh, Pear Berry, any suggestions for saving inks that dry up in the bottle? If they're water-based ink like this kind, this is another reason I like these inks, is you can just add some distilled water to them and let them sit overnight, then shake them up the next day, and your ink should be fine. Because it doesn't have anything, it doesn't go through a chemical change like an acrylic ink will, it doesn't have a shellac in it, um, they will be able to be uh, rejuvenated. And you can also use these inks on pretty much any type of paper. You don't need to have a special marker paper for this, um, which is nice if you don't want to have to go buy a new pad. You want to just use your watercolor paper or your cardstock or the art journal you already have. So that's one reason why these are so versatile. I just have some marker paper here. And um, these are some generic inks that actually just came with a glass pen, I think from like TJ Maxx or something. Um, the glass pen, actually, I think those came with a glass pen and I don't find that glass pens work very well with these types of inks because they're so thin. So I'll actually, I'll show you the one I recommend because I recommend the ones are Newton. I think out of the ones I own, these are probably the best quality ones. And I'll show you with different, um, different pens, what we get. So with a glass pen, you want to kind of fill up those, uh, the whole spiral there at the end so that it can hold as much ink. And you can see it's not really flowing off of my pen. I have a really difficult time using these types of inks with glass pens. I'm gonna try it with a bamboo pen, which should work a little bit better because bamboo is organic and it has a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of absorbency. So you can see you get a really nice long um, long scribble with a bamboo pen and we can try it with a dip pen and there's all sorts of different dip pens if you look at these three this quill pen here this is smaller it's um, great for drawing detailed lines you're not it's not gonna hold as much ink as um, some others but you can still get quite a bit of lines the more you press it you can get a nice wide line so it's very nimble you can almost use it like a, like you would a brush as the little tines spread apart, you get a you can see it kind of spreading apart right there. So you can get a wider, a wider line with that. And then you could just go up on the tip and get a tiny line. So that's a really nimble, handy drawing pen to have. Um, you can use these with calligraphy pens. So if you like to do calligraphy or brush lettering, I don't do that, so I'm just gonna make some random lines there. And then and these pens have this little um, brass uh clip on top that holds extra ink so you can go further when you have the nibs that have that little brass uh thing of a bob on top and then you have a regular drawing fountain, uh, not fountain pen dip pen here where again you can get quite a bit of drawing but it's not going to hold as much as that one because that has that reservoir or this much this one because it is organic and it's absorbing some of the ink and it just clings a little bit better i'm gonna need a paper towel here uh, Daniela Fiorini, I have Echoline liquid watercolors. Are they similar to any product you were going to talk about today? These would be similar to the Echoline liquid watercolors. You can also apply these with an airbrush. You can make spray inks with them or you can buy them as spray inks. And um, let's see, you can use them in technical pens for most part too. I don't have any technical pens. I only have fountain pens, but they do work really well in fountain pens. And generally, if you look up, if you have the inks, but you don't have the uh, box that they came in and there's no information on the bottle, you can look them up online and it will tell you, usually on the manufacturer's website, what media you can use to apply them with, what tools you can use them with. 
Um, and you can, of course, paint with these just like you would watercolors, like the, uh, the parrot um, demonstration we did a couple weeks ago with the liquid hydrous watercolors. You could do that with these watercolors. You would want to do it in a um, sketchbook so they wouldn't fade, or you would want to do that um, and then reproduce it so that you can make copies of it because these are not light fast products. You can also get these inks with, um, with mica or metallic particles in them. Like this one here, like the ones are Newton Gold drawing ink. Um, this one's actually waterproof once it dries. So is their silver one. These Bria Reese inks here, these liquid watercolors, these have um, mica in them. So the only thing I would warn you is that although the water-based inks, these uh, water-soluble, um, non-permanent inks, are good for fountain pens. I would not use ones that have the mica in your fountain pen or in your airbrush because it could clog or oxidize the inner workings of those pens. And you just want to make sure, especially if you're using this kind, that you clean your dip pens as well because you don't want them to oxidize or rust or they're not going to glide on your paper very well and they're just going to feel kind of dry and scratchy and that's no fun to, to draw with that. So, um, but as far as like brush apply, dip pen apply, you can do that with the, um, with the metallic ones as well. Jeanette Wild, mm -hmm. these are these safe to wash in your sink? Yes, these should be fine to wash in your sink. Um, what I would recommend doing uh, is I would wipe off what you can, and then um, I usually just rinse them in a little bit of water, and then put a couple like I have some isopropyl alcohol in a spray. I'd spray a little isopropyl alcohol on it and just kind of dry it up. So. The only ink I would have would be in my water bucket that shouldn't clog anything because it is a resoluble media, just like your watercolor. So if that goes down the drain, that really should not be a problem. But if you are concerned, you you could let it evaporate and you could just wipe it out with a paper towel out of the bottom of your of your uh, water cup. But I think that's a little excessive precaution. But if that if you are concerned, you absolutely can do that. Um, so. This, so these are probably the most simplest types of inks. I don't want to spend a lot of time on these because um, we might do a demo where we combine the inks at the end, but I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of these types of inks. And some bottles have droppers and some don't, so that's kind of also a personal preference. I love the droppers that are in the Jane Davenport inks. You can also use distress inks. If you have the distress inks, pretty much the same, um, same animal there, uh, except they're going to react more, whereas these inks are going to stain in your paper a little bit more because they don't have... There's like a, a thickness in the distress inks. I don't know if it's like an ox gall or glycerin or something in there. I think it's a glycerin that keeps it from staining your paper and lets it be more reactive. So that would be the difference between like the distress ink bottle and this. Um, it just depends on what you like. If you want your inks to lift up more, go for a distress ink. If you want your inks to stain and layer more, go for one of these inks here that I'm sharing. Um, and then like these inks here have a little dropper bottle. So there's a little tip kind of like a reinker. So if you prefer applying your inks that way, then go for that. So the applicator bottle, it might make the difference between you using a product and it sitting on your shelf unused. So kind of keep that in mind. If you know you're going to use pens all the time, go for these because they're in tip proof bottles because they're, see how they're fat on the bottom and on the top. So they're not like, not likely to be knocked over. Um, and they're open. They don't have a dropper top because they're meant to dip a pen in. So keep that in mind. What are you most likely to use it for? Although these are about the same product, um, how you use it is going to affect, um, which one you choose. These would be great for filling up water brushes. If you know you want to use them in a water brush, that would be a really good option to take. So so uh, just kind of keep that in mind when you're purchasing so you get something that you're going to use. Uh, D. Whitmore, what kind of ink would work with the glass pen? Oh, well, I'm going to show you. We will go to the Bombay India inks next. Um, they are a little bit thicker, and since they're thicker, they are going to cling to the slick glass surface a lot better. You Now, typically India ink refers to a carbon black ink that is pigmented, that doesn't fade, that is um, kind of opaque. Um, there have been colored India inks out recently. Bombay are the ones that I have. There are, I'm sure, others. Um, the Bombay inks are light fast, meaning they're not going to fade. So if you wanted to use this with your traditional watercolors and you wanted to do a painting and maybe you wanted to do um, your underpainting with the India ink and you knew you didn't want it to fade and then you wanted to do washes of watercolor on top, you could do that and not have to worry that your inks are going to fade on you. So that would be probably the biggest advantage to India ink. Um, India inks can be used in, um, there is fountain proof safe India ink, but you have to make sure it says that on the bottle. This is the one that I use. Um, it just says pen and ink sketch, no shellac, India ink, 
fountain pen ink. So you just wanna make sure that it says fountain pen safe or fountain pen ink on it. Um, some will be waterproof and some won't be. So that's the only thing you wanna uh, be aware of if you're getting India ink for your fountain pen. Like I have Higgins in the fountain pen India ink, but this is not waterproof. So, you know, just pay attention to the bottle. I think this is about $4 and this is pr about $10. Um, so, you know, you pay a little bit more for that formulation that has the fine enough pigment particles to go through your fountain pen and not clog it. Um, but if you plan on doing watercolor over it, you definitely want a waterproof version. Okay, I'm not gonna open up all these, but um, so the Bombay India inks come in two forms. You can get the bottles like this with a dropper top, which is very convenient, or you can get the smaller set that have the bottles like this with no dropper top. But if you're dipping a pen in it, this will be a little bit easier. Now it has a shellac in it, so it can stick the caps on pretty tight. <laughs> Did you have a question while I'm struggling uh, yes. with these caps? Uh, Beth Henry is Brea Reese a good bit brand. Oh yeah, I think they're fine. Um, I grabbed a few on clearance. Um, oh good grief, I'm not gonna. Be, these are these are my original India inks, and they are stuck. Um, yeah, I think so. They're like a liquid watercolor. Um, they're gonna perform like any other liquid watercolor. <clears throat> I've used the metallic ones on some cards, some fairy cards on my blog and YouTube channel, and they worked beautifully. They're super sparkly, super bright. I haven't noticed them fading, but I just used them on a greeting card. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think they're gonna be very comparable to like the Jane Davenport inks and the Windsor Newton ink. Maybe a little less thick than Windsor Newton, but pretty darn close. All right, I'm gonna use one of these because um, because these are newer and you want to be careful not to get ink around the, um, the thread of the neck. And I think that's what happens with these because these are plastic jars. The smaller ones are plastic and you're pouring out a lot of times because they don't have a dropper. So you have a tendency to get, um, ink on the threads of the lid and then it gets stuck, which that's what I'm going to have to, going to have to work on those. So this is the uh, India ink and let's try it with that glass pen. We'll use a fresh glass pen here. Uh, Fontaine Moore, is there a way to make the water soluble inks permanent? Um, you could spray a sealer on it when you're all done. You could spray a fixative over the layer when it's dry if you're working in a journal, but it's, they're not gonna be, you're not gonna make them light fast. You could take some precautions like framing with UV glass, but it's not gonna be as light fast as, um, as others. So there you can see, I was able to get some long strokes there with the India ink. Now I'll wipe this off and I'll try it with, a, um, with that same ink I was using with the other pen. You can see how it, how it differs. See, I can't even get it to pull a straight line and it feels scratchy. It, the India ink is thicker and it almost um, lubricates the nib and it helps it glide and then the, uh, the ink flows a lot better. So if you have glass pens and you're just really frustrated because you can't get them to, to go, try an acrylic or a India ink because they're gonna be just a little bit more viscous. Uh, India ink also comes in markers. You can get the Pit Artist pens. I have a few over here. They come in different sizes. I have the small ones for sketching and I've got the large ones for stamping. And there's a YouTuber who I'm friends with. Her name is Vicky Papianu from Clips and Cuts. I probably mispronounced her last name, it's Greek. Um, and she uses these a lot and does beautiful things. So you've got this brush tip, the big brush tip, and then you've got um, smaller ones. Then they have a, this is a smaller brush tip. Like if you get the regular brush tips, they're like that. And this is the jumbo. And then there's the drawing nibs, which I just really love their drawing pens. Um, their brush markers are available in around 50 colors. The um, the fine tip sketch ones I think are just black, brown, and sanguine. So um, your basic colors, I really like them. They're cheaper than Microns and they work really well. I think Microns use a very similar ink to the, to the pit pens, but I'm not exactly sure what the Micron uh, ink is, if it's an India ink or not. But those are wonderful for sketching with. I just, I like these because they look a lot like the, like a liquid watercolor, but they are light fast and that's important if you want to show your work or you want just want to make sure it doesn't fade. I have a few pieces here with the Bombay inks. This was done all in Bombay. You can stencil with it. Like if you pick it up with a sponge, you can spray apply it. Um, you could use like a little mouth atomizer or you can make a spray mist with it and you can do some spray applications. It's just a very, um, uh, very fun ink to use and it will stick on paper, fabric, canvas, 
um, wood. Um, I probably wouldn't use it on metal. I think it would wear off, but you could try it on metal, but it, it sticks on a lot of surfaces. And I know I have some other Bombay stuff in here. This is my older journal. I mean, it's been so much time writing that blog post. I could have marked these pages a little better. This is Bombay right there. And now you will notice if you use it thickly on like a smooth paper, like this mixed media paper here, the Canson XL, you will get a little bit of a sheen. So if you're doing this and planning on watercoloring over it, if you're using your, you're in thick enough that you're getting a sheen and you're on a smooth paper like that, your watercolor is going to resist. So use that to your advantage if you're doing that. So you don't end up with, um, so you don't end up with effects that you don't want. Like you don't want, if you're intending on glazing over a color, but everything has, um, has already dried and you've got a thick color there and nothing sticks, that wouldn't be a good effect. But if you knew you wanted like a white dove or seagull flying in the sky, you could paint it with the white Bombay ink and then do your sky over it and just wipe off the paint from the seagull and it would work. So that's another example. This is wet onto wet Bombay ink. And this is the, uh, the kind of full strength Bombay ink on top. And you can see how it's shiny where I used it kind of full strength. And that effect will be minimized on a, um, on a toothier paper. And I use some Bombay ink in the background here and in her hair. So there's some examples there. That's pretty much the Bombay examples. Um, so yeah, this is a very versatile product. Um, it's most of these colors are quite transparent. Uh, the white will be semi opaque. Uh, their black is semi opaque and you can uh, refer to any company's website that makes the ink. They will usually tell you on the website how transparent or opaque their products are. So if you like the look of liquid watercolors, but you want a non reactive solution, uh, or a finish, try the Bombay ones or they're the only real good colored indie ink that I know of. I'm sure there are probably others, but, um, but those are the ones that I have. Let's see Higgins. I don't know if they called this an in India ink. Higgins also makes a bunch of waterproof inks. They probably would be very similar to, uh, to your drawing ink. Just, they would dry waterproof. So, uh, on the box, they will tell you what they're appropriate for, whether it be technical pens, fountain pens or what have you. The next inks we're going to look at are, are uh, acrylic inks. And I know a lot of you guys stocked up on acrylic inks when they were on clearance at one of the big box stores. Cause I was seeing everyone post their videos and I did not luck out and find those inks, but I really didn't need them. So probably for the best. Cause I already had some, um, Dr. Peach Martin's ones and we'll take a look at those. Oh, I got a tray of them here. Um, I recommend you store your inks with the, uh, upright, um, even though they have tight fitting cut caps that have rubberized seals still on their side, they have that ability to leak. And, um, I've noticed like on some of my radiance watercolors, which are actually probably more like inks. I've had some of my radiance that I store like this in their original containers, uh, have the actual rubber seal kind of rot and then have it not fit back on it. Right. And I think that's just cause they're on their sides. I think if I had them all upright, if I had a space for them, that wouldn't have happened. So just another reason to keep your inks upright. If you can, trays are wonderful for this. Keeping, uh, this is a tray you made me, Sarah, this one here, that's full of, Oh this. God, I made that for you a long time yeah. ago. <laughs> now it's, uh, it's got a good job. Yes, it does. Like I, I rescued this, this bin from like, um, a, a broken plastic drawer thing. That's just the perfect height for, for these inks. So your acrylic inks are also going to come in a variety of colors. You'll probably have the greatest variety of ink colors in your acrylic inks. As far as, you know, like a light, fast, um, permanent ink go, you'll want to shake them up. You can see the pigments here. Uh, so I think that's the big, the big misnomer is a lot of people think that if you're using inks, then they are going to be completely transparent and they're going to be completely fading. And that's not the case. Acrylic inks are going to have a lot of the same properties for longevity as acrylic paints. Uh, a lot of times they're made with pigments. Like right here, they list the pigments that they use. This is a light fast rating of one. It uses pigment three, a uh, pigment yellow three and pigment green seven. So you can, if you get a quality ink, it's going to have that information on there. So you can still explore with inks and not worry about, um, about missing out on light fastness and whatnot. Um, you can also get pearlescent inks like that. This has a nice shimmer to it. This is an iridescent, um, and you'll get ones with different variations of like how much, how sparkle, how much 
opacity and sparkle it has. The more sparkle, the more opaque it's going to be. So you'll be able to use it on black cardstock or black envelopes if you do calligraphy and um, and get a lot of really neat effects. These need to be shaken up before you use them, just like the uh, India ink because of the pigments. They're not uh, like a dye emulsion. They are pigments, so they're going to sink out. Then you need to shake them up and get them redispersed. Um, so that might take you a little time. You can see how they do all kind of subtle like that. Uh, let's see, you can try those out with the different pens and see how those work. These are nice for doing a veil of color over, um, over another project. I just used one of the pearly inks yesterday, putting a veil of pearlescent over a mask I was working on. While I'm shaking this, does anybody have any questions? Uh, a little creative. What is the difference between acrylic inks and fluid acrylics? Viscosity, fluid acrylics are going to be a little bit thicker, but they're very similar. You could probably just add a little bit of, um, of water or medium to a fluid ink just to thin it enough to, um, to be able to use it with a pen. And you might be wondering, why would I buy acrylic ink when I have acrylic paints? I could just add some water. You just want to be careful when you're adding water to acrylic paints that you don't underbind them. If you add more than 30% water, um, you can end up it affecting the adhesion properties of the acrylic emulsion, and then it wouldn't um, it won't stick. It'll it won't be waterproof. It'll come right up when when somebody um, uh, when somebody brushes over it or touches it with a wet hand or something. So that's with like a fine drawing pen. I'll try it with our glass pen. This should work pretty good with a glass pen. It's working all right. It's not as good as the uh, not as good as the India ink. It still it feels a little thinner than the India ink. It definitely feels a little drier and scratchier, but it is going because it has a little bit more thickness to it than uh, than a regular ink. So this is permanent. If you use this with a brush, just like India ink, if you use it with a brush, you need to wash your brush before it dries and sets in. Whereas if you're using a watercolor ink, if you didn't get right to cleaning it, it would still dissolve again and uh, and work for you. So you definitely have to wipe out wipe off your nibs as well. Get them clean. We'll try it with this quill here. When I actually, I think I'm gonna go with a darker ink. I'm afraid that it might not show up very well. Let's go with this green one because I've already shaken it up for the most part, I think. Mariana Panopolis, Polis, what is the best ink to use with watercolor? I like to use, um, well, it depends on what I'm drawing with, but if I'm using my fountain pen, I use the um, this ink right here. It just says pen and ink sketch, but I, I bought this at a little uh, local shop about 10 years ago. Um, Art Supply Enterprises is the maker, and I have it on my favorites list on Amazon. I don't think Jerry's has this one, uh, but that's what I like because I can use it in a fountain pen. You can dip with it, but I usually use, um, I don't see, I think I have it upstairs at my table. I usually use Speedball Dip um, Waterproof India ink when I'm using the dip pens just because it's cheaper and it works really well with the dip pens. And it's also got a, the bottle is tapered and kind of spill proof and I'm kind of clumsy, so... Uh, that's what I use for that. So I'd only spend the money to get that ink if you were going to use it in a fountain pen. Otherwise, any waterproof India ink is fine. Oh, this one shows up quite a bit better. So that's with the little quill, uh, the small quill drawing pen. I'll do the glass one again. Moon Ram, could you compare Bombay White with Pen White and Bleed Proof White? Sure. Oh yeah, that one work is working a lot better. Maybe I didn't have that that coral color mixed up enough. I still feel like it's a little scratchier than the uh, India ink. So, if you love glass pens but you're having trouble with them, I still would recommend an, the India ink over that. I'll uh, we'll do this calligraphy pen. You want to fill it up so you get you can see the ink in between the brass um, clip and the the pen the silver pen part underneath. And I won't be doing any calligraphy because I don't know how. Do you do calligraphy, Sarah? I don't know. Yeah, this holds the, the uh, acrylic ink really well. That that would go a long way. I think that's like the perfect viscosity for these uh, calligraphy pens with the clips on top. 
Now, because that's acrylic ink, I don't want to leave that like that. I can see that I have some ink in there. So I'm just going to grab my isopropyl alcohol. I'm just going to kind of douse it. You could just have a little cup of this um, and swish your, your, uh, your pen in it. That'd probably be a better way to go even. But now I can see, I can see light through it. I can see that I don't have any more um, ink in there. So I'm pretty happy with that. So just kind of keep that in mind. Keep your nibs clean because it's the same thing with a brush. If you keep them clean, they're going to last you a long time. Um, let's see. Oh, we'll try the bamboo pen with these. I don't know if this is boring or helpful or what. A little creative. Have you used platinum carbon ink for waterproof ink? No, I haven't. I haven't. I, um... I have the inks that I have here. I bet that would be an awful lot like the India ink because India ink is carbon based. Um, but I'm not, I'm not that familiar with all the brands. I just have a little bit of kind of each kind of ink. So if anybody wants to make some recommendations in the chat, please do. That'll help the people that are watching and help the people that are on replay as well. Steven Jedi, what are your favorite inks? Um, I would say the bomb. I like the Bombay uh, India ink a lot. They're probably my favorites. Um, I also, I tend to like my inks in brush pens, so I really like the Jane Davenport Mermaid Markers, and I like her inks in brush pens. Oh, these have a scent to them, by the way, so you might not care for that. Um, I haven't noticed it smelling too much after I've used them, but but like this one smells like cherries, so that might bother some people, so just kind of keep that in mind. If you These are sold at Michael's, um, so if you don't like fragrance you might want to go like a Bria Reese which would probably also be at Michael's they have something very similar to that if not this brand there's other um, companies the Momenta company that makes this also has like the line artsy products um, that they so it's exactly the same just branded differently um, so yeah uh, next I want to go to alcohol ink so any more questions on the acrylic inks we're caught up. Okay, great. So acrylic inks, you can use them anywhere. You use them with acrylic paints. Um, you can use them to glaze over your acrylic paints. They will stick on top of acrylic paints. They will stick on top of watercolors. Not great under watercolors just because they will seal up the paper uh, more than like a, a Bombay ink. So you would have way more of a resist with these than you would with the, with the Bombay ink. So just kind of keep that in mind. So it might be a really cool effect. So don't get me wrong, but I just want to warn you that watercolors aren't going to stick as well on top of that. Okay, alcohol inks. That is a craft staple, and I actually have a couple different papers to use these on. So one thing I did was um, I actually put some inks in a palette. I know Ranger makes a palette designed for that, so if you don't have one and you... I think theirs has more uh, little divots for it, so you can put all of their ink colors in there, but... Um, but you don't have to, you can use anything for that. Uh, so I put some in there, let them dry, and then I can use like a clear uh, alcohol blending marker and pick them up. I'll actually show you that really quick. Can I have one of the Jane Davenport's? Someone wants to do me wants me to do a sniff test sure. on it. Are you bothered by scents? I'm very rarely. Okay. Weird, it smells kind of like, it almost, I feel it smells kind of like a hard candy a little bit. Kind of, yeah. They're very, they're they're mildly but, scented. They're not, I don't find them offensive. I don't no, know. No, and I have to get real close to, it, yeah, it almost smells a little bit like a type of hard candy. There's a bunch of other fragrances there too. They all have different, uh, the scents match the color, kind okay, of like Mr. Sketchy. Okay, so this was Frida, which looks like maybe cherry. Yep, I think so. All right. I'll sniff test. This is live action. Sniff I know. Test. I'm just like we've All hit right. a new low. We're sn we're sniffing markers on air. Hey, it's legal, <laughs> right? Oh yeah. So there, you can pick up the ink with a clear blender. Yeah, the limeade. The gr limeade smells. Yeah, smells a little bit like a lime. Just don't put it in your margarita mix. Ooh. Mermaid tail. I don't know if I want to smell mermaid <laughs> tail. Yeah, what's that smell like? It actually kind of smells like a perfume I have. Oh, yeah? But not... It's like a sweet, florally smell. Oh, interesting. But it's not overpowering by any means. Oh, that's good. The only thing that ever bothers me scent-wise is there's that Abercrombie and Fitch cologne. Oh, I am not familiar with it. I'm only familiar because there's a guy in the bank that I go to, 
And he always has so much of it on. Because, like, you walk through the door, and mm-hmm. he's in his office, and you can just smell it. Ugh. Or that Axe body spray stuff that teenagers wear oh, and they yes. don't know, they don't know how to oh, properly word, apply. Yes. All right, so gloss, um, alcohol ink works really great on Ooh, glossy the watermelon paper. watermelon is not... Oh, it's not watermelon It's ink? like, it smells like watermelon, but like off watermelon. Oh, like slightly spoiled watermelon? Yes. Oh, that's too bad. It is. It's pretty color, though. It is pretty. And at, least like... the, at least the scent dissipates once it dries. Right. All right, so I have some Yupo, which is a synthetic uh, plastic paper. It's basically oh. a sheet of plastic. <laughs> hydrangea. It smells like old lady perfume. Oh, oh yeah, that's hydrangea for you. Okay. But again, very pretty color. Yeah. <laughs> um, so alcohol inks are best used on a coated paper like marker paper or a non-porous surface such as metal, plastic, tile, anything where the ink is gonna be able to sit on top. Because when you use this on regular paper, it absorbs in and gets really dark. Uh, so let's just, this is marker paper here, and this is Yupo, which is a plastic. So with a marker paper, it's not too bad. I'll try this with, you can see it getting, well, I don't know if you can actually see that on, on your paper. But you can do some really neat effects on um, coated surfaces or non-porous surfaces because it um, it reacts and it stays wet long enough that you can blend your colors. Ooh, hot cocoa. Oh, I bet that smells good. Ooh, it smells like chocolate. That smells good. I don't drink hot cocoa, but I like the smell of it. I could spread that around a little bit, and you can see I'm getting a nice green. Where they mix together here, it looks almost black, where it's absorbed into the paper. So that's what I was getting at with the um, with using it on a marker paper versus, I mean, using it on a plastic paper or a uh, glossy cardstock, because then you'll have the ver- the variety. You also get this cool reaction when you spray it with alcohol. So it's not so much of a drawing technique as this would be like a kind of a fun card making background or home decor product technique. These colors are a little bit um, garish, but kind of just give you an idea of what you might want to do with these inks. These are permanent. Uh, they are alcohol based, so they do have a little bit of an odor. And um, on a paper like this, you can let it dry and then you can actually go in with like a Q-tip with alcohol in it and wipe it away. Or you can use um, hand sanitizer on a stamp once it's dry and stamp on it and lift away some of the ink. Uh, so it's just kind of a fun medium. Although it dries, it never really cures. You can always reactivate it again with alcohol. Um, a lot of the markers that you're used to using are alcohol-based markers, like your Sharpies, any permanent marker, um, pretty much. We'll get into the other one that isn't. Uh, but any permanent marker will react like that. Um, Copics, you could use Copic ink for these techniques. The only thing I warn you on these inks, um, you can apply them with a brush. Your brush will get will be, will be get hard and stiff. You will need to clean it uh, with like a, probably a pen cleaner when you're done you can of course use any of the inks to apply it but it's really they're really thin inks so they're not going to work as well with um with like a glass pen or a fine nib and also the applicators don't make it really accessible to ink them up that way i mean you could try Uh, applying some to a nib but i don't think it's going to work a little creative can you use glossy photo paper with alcohol inks Oh, that actually does work. Um, you can, you're not going to, it's going to dry faster because glossy photo paper has a coating on it. So you're not going to get the same effect, but you definitely can. I can grab some. So the violet syrup. Yeah. Smells like violets. All right. The berry licious is, uh, it's okay. It smells, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Robitussin. <laughs> I don't like that smell. J- Jason brought home a, um. I do like it was like feisty cherry soda or something, Ooh. and it had that it had that like Robitussin and then tinsel. I don't know. I can't tell what that smells like, but it's I don't know. It doesn't smell terrible. None of these like smell real terrible except for the hydrangea. Ugh. Ugh. Fresh air. I doubt it smells like fresh air. <laughs> Probably not. Um. It smells like a candle you get from the candle, Yankee Candle, but not as strong. Oh, yeah? Like... Who grabs some? That's what I think of. 
All right, so this is your glossy photo paper. Let's do the polished stone technique, kind of drip a few inks in here. I went with lighter colors because the other ones I had were so dark that when you mixed them, they went really black. I think that the um, one of the best ways to use these inks is making backgrounds and whatnot. I also tinted glass with it. I have a few little dishes that I tinted with these inks. So it was kind of fun. I'll grab those in a second to show you. But yeah, you can get a lot of the same effects on the glossy photo paper. It's just that the coating on the photo paper grabs the ink and dries it quicker. So you're not going to have as much time to play with your inks as you would if you were doing um, doing it on a glossy cardstock or a Yupo. So that's why you hear a lot of people say don't use photo paper. It's not going to work with photo paper. It's not as easy to do it with photo paper, but it does it does work. And um, not all techniques are going to work because photo paper, the I mean, the glossy cardstock is designed to make things dry slowly, whereas the photo paper is designed to make things dry quickly. So that's the uh, the big. Uh, the big Kayla, Chaput, Chaput, are alcohol inks light fast? Nope. Even when you you know pony up six bucks for a Copic, that's gonna fade just as quick as a one dollar sharpie. All right, the blueberry, it's it's okay. And last but not least, fairy floss. Uh, what kind of floss? Cotton candy, probably. Oh, that's awful. Does it smell like cotton candy? I no. So I, I think that's what they're referring to with floss. I think it's. Is it? She's Australian, so I think she's referring well, to like cotton candy. I don't eat cotton candy, and if it smelled like that, I definitely wouldn't eat it. I don't know what it smells like. It's like a weird... I don't know. I want to smell it. I can't describe it. It's weird. Let it's me like see. A, I think they... It's I pretty. Guess, I like that color. The, the color is beautiful. Like... You know what? I think these smell less than when I first got them. You think I so? Think, I'm going to shake this up and give it another whiff. I, think I, did, that the, I didn't shake it, but I rolled I it around a little bit. I think the smell is, is fainter than when it first... It's very mild... Yeah. I think it's, I think it's faded from when I first really? when I first because got it. Because none of them are strong, yeah. but they each have a smell, mm -hmm. and most of them are fine. Again, the hydrangea was no. <laughs> that's that's like what ninety year old women wore for perfume fifty years ago. You know what I mean? Like, right, right, strong. Yes. Uh, so your yes, your alcohol markers would probably be the preferred method to use alcohol ink if you're drawing. Um, you can use it with a brush, um, but I just think it's a little, you get a little too much with a brush where the, the marker has like the felt on the inside that holds all the ink. So you're just getting out a controlled amount, um, especially if you're using it on paper, because if you just look at this, and this is marker paper, it's not even, you know, regular paper. It just looks black everywhere that the ink is spilled because it absorbs and it's, it's so strong. Um, so I would definitely go for markers, uh, but you can get markers that are refillable. You can get um, alcohol inks from Copic to refill them. I would say do not spray apply these inks except for Copic ink because they have an air airbrush system. So their inks must be fine to spray. Um, the Ranger uh, inks are not okay to spray. So you don't want to like spritz them. You don't want to... Um, you don't want to put them in an airbrush. You don't want to make a spray mist out of them. They have resins in them that help them be a little more durable than like a Copic marker or a Sharpie. But because of that, it can make your, um, it can be a respiratory irritant. So we don't want you getting sick doing that. And I want to show you some paper that's really neat. Uh, so this was Yupo here. No, this was Yupo. It's kind of a translucent paper. You got an interesting effect there. And then this is photo paper and this is photo paper which is on its way to drying because it dries really quick. Now, this is a sketch that I did on render no show through paper here. And this I used alcohol markers. These were the new Ahuhu ones, but you can use any alcohol markers. And I did this by layering rather than blending because this paper is not very good for blending, but it's designed to not bleed through. So if you can believe that's the front and that's the back and there's no bleeding. And I bet I this has bled through a couple pages of my marker pad here. Let me just flip through and see. Well, it did actually it didn't bleed onto the next page, but it did bleed onto the back pretty well. I'm really surprised it didn't go into the next page. So that's what the back of that looks like. So if you want to work in a journal for Inktober and you want to make sure that you're not going to, um, you know, ruin the next page in your book, the render paper is excellent for that. However, it doesn't blend. But if I've got paper like this, I can easily blend my colors. I'm going to show you that really quick. Uh, Teresa Gonzalez, is there a brand of glossy photo paper you like? 
like? Um, glossy cardstock, yes. Um, I get chrome coat and I buy it from a local print shop and they usually charge around 25 cents a sheet. So, um, so it's pretty affordable. Or the Judykins um, glossy cardstock, you can get it at like stamp shows. Um, most stamp companies will sell glossy cardstock. Ranger has one, I believe, because um, they usually have pretty much every, all of your basic stamping surfaces. So they're probably all chrome coat, honestly. Stampin' Up had a good one, but I think it's chrome coat. So if you can get chrome coat from a, a supplier, it's gonna be cheaper than ordering from a stamp company. So with the, um, with a marker paper, it keeps your ink wet so you can keep working and blending. I need to test these colors for us to just grab three greens. Oh, they're nothing alike. Look at that. <laughs> Uh, Melissa Moore, can you draw or color over the alcohol inks with the acrylic pens, like the Dilutions pens? Over alcohol inks? Yes. Yes, you can. I would make sure that you had a, um, make sure you have like a surface that, uh, it has a little tooth to it, so your pen's not just going to be, like on top of this paper, I don't know if the Dilutions pens would stick because there's no tooth, nothing to grab that, the ball of that pen to like let the colors go. But if you were on like a watercolor paper or um, any, just even like a Canton XL art journal paper, something that's got a little bit of tooth to it, like even this uh, render paper has a little bit of a little bit of tooth to it, you would be able to go over that. Like I went over with a Posca pen to do my white highlights there, and it was fine. And that's an acrylic pen, just like the the uh, Diane uh, Reevely Dilutions pens. So just make sure your paper's not too super slick. On glossy paper, it's n I don't think it's gonna stick because it's just too um, too unwieldy. I need. Different colors here if I'm going to do a blend. Uh, DW020, could you use these on silk? The Yeah, you could, I believe. Um, I don't know if... I've never, you, never worked on silk, so I don't know if it would uh, if it would eat the fabric, though. That's the only thing, because I don't really know anything about silk. It would color it for sure, but it might also eat it away. I would definitely look on the Jacquard website. They make um, the pinata inks which is another brand that I recommend. They actually have an exciter pack that's like 10 colors, so you can, but they're mixing colors, so you can blend them to make pretty much whatever color you want. So that would be my recommendation over the, over the Ranger even. All right, so I'm just doing a blend here. And I'm gonna do a couple different ways to blend. I did dark to light, now I'm just gonna do a, one where I prime the paper first, and then I'm gonna do the sample in the render books just so you can see the difference here. So with that one, I started with the dark, then went medium, then went light. So here, here I'm doing the light everywhere to prime the paper. Then I'm going to do dark. Actually, I'm using Copix. I should use the brush tip on that one. Uh, Lana Goes Art. Have you tried to use Distress Glaze over the UPO paper with ink on it? No, I don't have any Distress, distress Glaze. Um, I don't even have any Micro Glaze. So I don't have that product to use it, unfortunately. Ooh, that's not working as well priming it. That almost got too much ink in there. It's almost resisting. Well, I didn't get a very good blend on that. But you can see on the back how it's all bled through. We'll do the same thing on the render paper. And I'm gonna test my colors here because I'm not 100% confident. See, that should be the darkest. This one. Well, those are both about the same, actually. I don't need that one. Okay, let's just use these three colors. Um, so I'm just going to do those two blends here on this render paper. The render grabs the ink and dries it really quick, kind of like how photo paper does. So instead of blending, I just get kind of a layering of color. And even if I do the other method where I do it light first, I still don't think I'm going to get a very good blend. Uh, Chastity Dufford, which ink would you recommend for someone doing Inktober for the first time? Um, it really depends on what you, how you like to work. If you just want to do black and white and then do a, um, then do like a ink wash over it, I would probably recommend a waterproof 
black ink like any of the waterproof India inks like the speedball if you're using a dip pen or the um, art enterprises one if you're using a um, a uh, fountain pen or use just use a pit pen or a micron something a disposable pen like that and then I would get maybe a few just really light watercolor inks just in mixing colors and then I would just do washes for my colors or you could use markers over that um, the neat thing about the uh, the microns is that you can go over them with both watercolors or alcohol pens and still not have any running so that would probably be a really nice way to start and you definitely you wouldn't use up your pens in a month if you wanted to try with a disposable option to see if you liked it first so this is the uh, those colors on the render paper when I flip it absolutely no bleed through and I used a lot of ink there you could see how shiny it was a couple seconds ago and here on the marker paper that was the front side and the back sides almost as dark it didn't bleed through the, to the next paper on the pad but um, it definitely bled through on the sketchbook so if you are looking for a paper that won't bleed through for your Inktober. That's a really nice one. I don't have it linked up, but I know Jerry's does carry it and they carry different sizes and I think also tear out pads if you want um, if you want to be able to do that. But just keep in mind that these alcohol pens are not light fast. Most of your inks aren't and the real benefit to this paper is for alcohol pen use. I don't think I would bother spending the money for this book because these are kind of expensive for water-based media because um, it's I think it's only worth the money if you're going to do a lot of alcohol pen work in it. Melissa Moore, which alcohol inks are your favorites? I like the Pinata, but it's they're they're kind of hard to find in stores. Where the Ranger ones are really easy to find in stores. Um, they are, my local art shop used to sell the Pinata ink, so that's why I have some of those. I find that they have they have few. Well, you know, they might have as many colors, but they have some really basic primary colors where. In the Ranger, I felt like a lot of their colors are muted or um, kind of grungy looking. They're not as clean, and it's really easy to make a color grungy, and it's, you can't make a color clean again, so I like the Pinatas. And they're available in larger containers, too, if you are looking for a bigger bottle. But, I mean, you can get these at any big box store and use a coupon So you know for the, the Ranger ones, so I can see the appeal of that. And I have mostly Rangers for that reason, because I picked them up on, on uh, clearance. Yasmin Mansour, have you used Mozart brush pens? Yes, I like them. They, they're, uh, they have a, actually I could show you here, because I have some of them. I'll grab a zig too, just so I can show you a comparison on the tip size. Oh, I have so many brush pens over here. It's kind of crazy. Just give me a second, I'll hunt them down. They're all in this, they're all in this bin. Oh, here we go. All right, so this is a Mozart. Mozart. I don't know how they, if they pronounce it like Mozart the Composer or or what. Uh, so this is the Zig, which is probably the most popular, uh, the oldest brand. And the Mozart's, uh, or Mozart's, uh, just a teeny bit bigger. So this is the Zig. And this is the Mozart. So I can get on the tip of the Mozart and get a pretty fine line, or I can press and get a wider line. And on the zig, I can get a really fine line, or press and get a wider line. So I, you know, they're very similar. Um, Mozart ones are a lot cheaper, um, and I think they did at one point. They had some inks available, but I have not seen. I went looking for their inks to see if they still had them because you can pull the backs off to re-ink them. So like if you had, you know, any of the non-glittery. Maria Reese or um, Radiant inks and stuff, you could re-ink them, but, and I'm pretty sure they had like a set of 12 inks, but I went looking for them the other day um, because I reviewed the color at markers and they do sell inks to refill them, and I thought for sure that I remembered Mazar offering that too, but I couldn't find them, so maybe they were just out of stock when I was looking, but um, I find honestly most of the brush pens to be very similar, and the big difference to be the price tag. Um, I know some people have major preferences like to the zigs because they were out longer they have a smaller tip and the barrels a little bit fatter so <clears throat> it's a little bit more comfortable for them to hold but I honestly I don't really notice a difference between them too much I've got ink on my table I could alcohol ink my table oh my I just made it worse I just it's like spraying this with alcohol it's just making it go everywhere. My husband just painted my table white 
because it was got, it had gotten all inky. Oh no, now I'm just taking off the acrylic because there's acrylic paint under this and the alcohol is taking off the acrylic paint. That's the other thing I want to tell you about alcohol ink, teachable moment, is um, you probably don't want to use alcohol inks over acrylic because they will dissolve your acrylic. Um, if you're using an alcohol marker over acrylic, the acrylic paint can actually dislodge and cake up your alcohol pen. So if you're using like an $8 Copic marker and you get the tip all messed up and you have to replace the tip, that's a bummer. So, but at least you can replace the tip, but still, they're two bucks a pop, so you don't want to do that too often. Carol Sue Pope, are the Ranger Distress spray inks the same formula as the ones in the dropper bottles? No, the, the spray inks are more diluted. Our Fatima Joffrey, how does Mozart compare to Arte Arteza for blending? I'd say they're about the same. I can grab a couple and show you. I just stuck all my Arteza in here too. I really, I like the Arteza there. I like them all, that's my problem. Let me see, grab a couple of the Mozart ones. The thing I really like is I can blend everything with each other. So, you know, if I have a shade in Arteza and different shade in Mozart, I can blend them together. So these, both of the Mozart ones, so we'll just put a little bit of dark blue there and we'll grab the light blue. I'm not sure if this is the best paper for a while. You know what? Let me do it in my, um, I've used this sketchbook a lot for those pens, so let me just find a spot. I'll go in the back of, I'll go in the back of the, oh, I did this. I used the Arteza pens for this. This was super fun to paint. I used the Arteza pens and then I used um, colored pencil and a little bit of gouache on top. It was super fun. Uh, let's go in the back of, this painting doesn't come out very well. All right, I'll do the Arteza here. I don't use blues very often. I hope they blend well. Oh my gosh, this humongous spider just crawled up the shelf next to me right there. <laughs> It's like an inch and a half long. Let's see it right there. Oh my God. Yuck. <laughs> you stay on your side of the table, spider, and we're going to be fine. Ew. Get out of here. Go hide in the corner where you belong. Oh, don't go in the basket. Stay out of the paper pads. I don't know. I want to be reaching for a six by six paper pad and have an awful okay. All surprise. Right. He's going. Where is he? Oh. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he almost got on my foot. <laughs> This show is a train wreck, I it feel is. like. <laughs> okay, that's the uh, that's the Arteza right there. Ugh, he was gross. This is Ugh. the Mozart. Ooh, the Mozarts are surprisingly juicy, and I've had these ones. Oh my gosh, you know what? The Mozarts blend better. Look at that. Wow. Well, hey. Well, actually, though, it looks like I'm seeing more of a hard line on the Mozart. Maybe the Mozart are just juicier. Well, at first I was really excited about the Mozart because they blended, but I like the subtle blend of the Arteza more. But you know what? To tell you the truth, I really don't think there's a heck of a lot of difference. I'd say get the set that meets your needs, whether it's Mozart, Arteza, Color It, Zig, Uhuhu, whatever whatever works for you. I really don't think there's a huge difference. Um, you know, just then the color variety, how many, how many pens you want and what are you willing to pay? Basically, Zig is going to be the most expensive. You can replace a Zig marker if it goes dry. Um, you can refill the color up markers if they go dry. Quite frankly, you could probably refill them all if you had the right color water-based ink to go in it. Make sure you get like the first type of ink I was showing you, like the the water reactive water-based inks, like your distress inks, even your re-inkers, maybe with a little bit of water in them um, and a little bit of glycerin in them to help them glide. But you know, I really think they're all the same product, just not the same product, but they're equivalent products, I guess I would say. Um, but yeah, for blending, I mean, they're pretty darn close. I would say the Arteza had a little more softer of a blend, but um, the Mozart ink reacted really well. I could try it with some water too. We can try that. This is the Mozart. Let me get a water brush because I don't have a pot of water. Thank goodness I would have knocked it over at least once by now. Let's see. This is Mozart. Uh, 
Gail AC, can you buy individual Mozart pens? No, not that I know of. Sometimes stores offer that later, like if they've sold so many units. But for a, for a company to offer uh, open stock, they usually have to sell so many sets to make it worthwhile. Neither of them are blending all that great with, with water. Um, they blend pretty well with each other. This is my the sketch pad that I use most of the time. Um, I use a brush pens in it a lot. I started that one was started off with a brush pen and then finished up with gouache. I really like them. They're a really convenient way to lay down color. And then, but then I do like to go over them with like colored pencil and whatnot to help um, to help smooth things out and get it the look that I want. The last ink I wanted to talk to you today about is kind of a, an oddball weirdo specialty ink that smells really bad. So um, I don't use it very often, but the times that I need it, it is there for me. And it is a, it's actually a very um, tried and true product. And it was usually used by fashion designers and, um, and graphic designers. And these are the chart pack xylene based markers. And I did see on Jerry's that they also have an alcohol based pen too. Um, they're they're a little hard to find i got mine it was like on clearance at ac more and it's like a product they never stocked i have no idea why they had it in there but i just decided to take a chance on it um they smell like death they are really strong like if you i'm gonna take a whiff of that sarah Woo! <laughs> do, do i have to give it back <laughs> you're having way too much fun with that marker um but they are very, they're very vibrant. They are very strong. So those very are strong. not good. They, those remind me of like the big fat Sharpies you can get when you make a sign. Yeah. Or like that's what that reminds me of. There were a lot of markers that like, um, like the silver and gold ones, like the ones you would prime, they would have that same odor to them. They give you very smooth, a continuous color, which is why I think fashion designers like them. Um, they're I probably even a little bit more streak free than a Copic marker or a regular alcohol pen, but because so much ink comes out at once. Um, it just gives you a beautiful solid color when you're working with them, but they do smell. The thing that I really like about them is that I can stamp on like a coaster or a tile with stays on ink, or I could be working with alcohol ink and decide I want to draw on top of an alcohol ink background, like, like say one of these, for example, let's use this one because I don't know if the coating on the photo paper would mess up my markers. So I could draw on top of this. Uh, let's see, is that, that's clear. Is that black? This is black. I could draw on top of this and it's not gonna mess up any of the ink underneath. It's not gonna lift it up. Where if I drew on top of this with a, um, with a Sharpie or a, an alcohol marker, I'll just show you with the clear so you can really see my point. It's going to lift up and smear the color underneath. You see how that kind of just reactivated it? I don't want to do that with one of my colored Copics because it would just pick up all the ink and suck it into the nib. So this way, with a with a xylene-based marker, because the solvent is different, it's not going to, it's not even going to see that layer underneath. It's not going to interact with it or affect it at all. So if you're stamping with stays on ink, which is an alcohol ink product, it's just like your alcohol ink markers in a pad you can color over it with this and it's not gonna lift up all that ink. If you stamp with a stays on ink and then you go to color it with a Sharpie, you're gonna lift up all that stays on ink and just have a muddy mess. The other really cool thing with this is if you have a toner-based copy, a laser printout, I usually just print out what I want, take it to the library and ask them to copy it for me. Then I can color, I can put it face down on something and color over the back with the clear marker and transfer it. So it gives you a lot of options for art journaling and um, stuff like that, because then you can take photocopies and stick them right, transfer them right into your art journal, or you could transfer images right on coasters. And I did link to a tutorial on that in my blog today if you wanted to see that. Um, so it's just a really, a really fun technique that you can do that, um, where you kind of do also need to use alcohol pens or alcohol inks and, it, and these don't react with your alcohol ink. So it's another waterproof solvent uh, medium you can use in conjunction with your other mediums, but they smell bad. So if you have any sort of, if you get a headache with any products, they're going to bother you. Um, but that is pretty much all I had to, to offer today. Uh well, we have a question. Oh, sure. I'll uh, take Penny you Cormier. I bought an empty acrylic pen with a mixing ball. Which ink would work best, if any? You can. I would use acrylic ink, or I or or fluid acrylic paint. Alexandra Manga, how do you get ink stains off your hands? Lava soap, baby. <laughs> 
that stuff. I actually, I bought, got a couple of those, um, those empty containers from, they were from Dollarama in Canada. It was two for a dollar. They're soap dishes. They probably have them at the Dollar Tree and everywhere department store that you can find. But I put a one bar in there for cleaning brushes and one bar in there for cleaning my hands. So um, I always have my lava soap under the sink ready to go. All right, let me see if I, I don't know. I got behind on the chat here. Get caught. I don't know if we're caught up on questions. I gotta clean my pens. People are enjoying the spider debacle. Oh my word. I still don't know where he went though. He went that way. He went that way. I hope he, he heads could... over to Jason's area. <laughs> oh my word. <sighs> he was like the size of a quarter. Ugh. His body was the size of a quarter. His legs were additional. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind spiders, but they don't need to be around where I am. Yeah. All right. Uh, Moon Ram, does ink tents work on render paper? It should. Um, the only thing with the render paper that's going to give you some issues with some of your medias is that it's so smooth that, um, you know, when you're when you're going with an ink tense pencil and, or a block and you're using it dry, you do need a little bit of tooth to grab that. Even a hot press watercolor paper has more tooth in that render paper. So that would be your only limitation. If you're using like um, a wet brush to pick up the paint off your blocks and go to it, um, it's not going to be that big of a deal. But, you know, you've got a super smooth paper, so that's gonna, that's really gonna dictate how well, how well it works for your techniques. You know, how much you want to layer. You're not gonna be able to layer much on the render. But I was able to layer, it, it wasn't so smooth that I couldn't layer the, um, I only have this one picture in here because I tore out all my other ones because there was a learning curve on this paper and I made hot messes after hot messes. So that's why uh, I only have one picture in here. But I was able to do alcohol pens and layer on colored pencil and Posca pen. So, but, but still, I mean, there's no texture on that. You can see there's no physical like bumps on there. Everything is very flat. Um, so just keep that in mind. You won't like pastel products. I think you're, you'll have a little bit of hard time layering too much of that. Uh, Penny Cormier, what kind of ink is in Prismacolor markers? Alcohol. I love Prismacolor Mark. Those were the first ones I started with because they were so affordable when I, because I, everyone was getting into Copics. This was probably like 2008 or 2009 and I just couldn't afford them. They were, you know, six or seven dollars each and, and I didn't want to make a mistake. If I didn't like them, I didn't want to have spent a ton of money on them and I went with the Prismacolor Markers and um, I really enjoyed them and they worked really well on cheaper paper like the Georgia Pacific stuff from Sam's Club, which is what I was using at the time. Um, I found they didn't bleed as much as like a Copic does on those. I think just because it doesn't shoot up so much ink, but they're wonderful. And last question, Alexandra Manga. My Jane Davenport inks have some white hunk in the bottle, especially my green one. What is it? Oh, that's strange. Uh, let me look at my bottles and see if I have any white stuff in my... I'm one, you know what? I'm going to look at the top of the ink dropper and see if there's any any foam in there because that would be my guess that maybe it had like a seal. Sometimes you'll have, um, I'm just going to hold, try to look. Oh, you know what? I do see some stuff in there. I'll be darned. Oh, that's, ooh, I'm going to pour this in a, bo in a bowl and see what's in there. I never noticed that before. Isn't that strange? Oh, this is clean because I want to pour it back in. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, look at that. What is that? Huh. Can you see that on camera? I don't know if you can see that on camera. Oh, here, here's some. What is that? I wonder if it's, it's breaking up. Oh, that's weird. You know, I bet it's um, I bet it's a pigment. It probably just needs to be shaken up really well. That's what I would say. I mean, or I mean, the dye or whatever the dispersant is or something in there. Isn't that weird? I don't. Th it's it breaks right up, so I'm assuming that just it's um, pigment that needs to be shaken up really well. And mine's been sitting on a shelf too, so. Probably if I used it more often, shook it up more than, than 
that would be an issue. Yeah, that's why I'd say, because it's not like plastic. I was thinking it might have been like a rubber seal that had fallen down off the dropper. And um, like what I was mentioning in the radiance inks, that some of the, there's like black rubber seals in there. And the um, one of the seals, some of the seals have rotted, I think, because I've had my uh, things on their sides. And so that's what I thought might have been in here. Like maybe some of that started to dry out and crack and fell in. But I think it's just pigment because it's stirring right up. I'd say it's one of the ink ingredients. I don't think it's anything weird. The more you know. Learn every day. You learn how unobservant I am. <laughs> I've never noticed that before. All right. Anything else before we sign off? We're all caught up. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. An hour, more than an hour of talking about ink. I hope you learned something. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below the YouTube video. Don't forget to head over to my blog and sign up to win copies of Jane Davenport's new books. Uh, I will be picking three winners next week, so you got a pretty good chance. Um, just go leave a comment on my blog so that I can potentially draw your name. And uh, that's all I have. Check out our sponsor, jerrysartorama.com, for any of the inks. Um, and they have a lot more than what I showed. They don't have the Jane Davenport inks, but... Um, they do carry most of the stuff that I was talking about today. They de definitely carry a version of every different type of ink. And um, they do have good descriptions and information in their listing. So if you're curious about a pigment information, what I found on their website is that if you're looking at a paint or an ink, there's a little yellow button on the, um, like if say if it says like cobalt blue and then you'll see the price and then they'll be like, it might have a cautionary label. It might have like an exclamation point, meaning like there's something in there that you need to be aware of. And there might be like a little button. It's yellow and it looks like a sheet of paper. If you click on that, that gives you information about what pigments are in your product. If there's any health advisories, anything that you need to know about that product so you can know it before you order it. So keep that in mind when you're shopping so that you can, um, know exactly what you're buying because the more you know about the materials you use the better artist and the safer you're going to be too all right do you have anything to add sarah i don't all right guys thanks so much for watching we'll see you next time and happy crafting